I'm Joe James and in this video I'm going to explain the spanning tree protocol. The spanning tree protocol eliminates cycles in a network. It finds the shortest path to the root node from each switch in the network. And it saves redundant paths in case of a failure. So if one switch goes down, it can establish a new spanning tree. It runs in a data link layer, which is layer 2 of the network, and it uses MAC addresses. So there are three different port roles in the spanning tree. There's the root port, which is the shortest path to the root switch. It's always open, so it forwards all packets. The designated port is facing a root port, so it also is open and forwards all packets. The blocked port does not send or receive any packets. Blocked port has to be blocked to prevent cycles in the network. So let's say we want to apply the spanning tree protocol to this network. And think of each one of these as a switch, and each one of them would have a MAC address. However, we've abbreviated that here by using a simple letter as the switch ID. We're going to start by electing the root switch, then we're going to tag the root ports, and then we're going to tag designated ports, and then we'll block every remaining port. So to elect the root switch, how do we do that? It's selected first based on priority and then based on switch ID. The priority is a number from 0 to 65,000 and it comes in multiples of 4096. The spanning tree protocol uses a default priority of 32768 so every switch will by default have that as a priority. So if you don't manually override the priorities then the lowest switch ID is used to select the root switch which in this case would be A. In some cases you don't necessarily want the lowest MAC address to be your root switch because that may be your oldest switch. Commonly the MAC addresses go up in time so the newer switches have a higher MAC address. So you may want to override that and you can do that using the priority just by setting the priority to a lower number for the one you want to force to be the root switch. In this case we're going to assume that they all have a default priority and the one that will be selected to be the root switch will be A because that's the lowest address or the lowest switch ID. Next we're going to tag the root ports. We're going to do that using the shortest distance to the root and then the lowest ID and we'll explain that. So first there are three switches that are directly connected to the root switch. Switch B has a root port connect directly connected to A. Switch C has a port directly connected to A and switch H also does. So we label those as the root port. So in other words, if H wants to forward traffic to the root, it's going to send it to this port. Switch D, we're going to label this as the root port because it has the shortest path to A. The only path, actually. Switch F has two options. It can go through B or through H. But again, we use the shortest distance and the lowest ID. Since both of those two routes have the same distance, we use the one with the lowest ID, which is B. So F labels this port its root port. G, again, we have uh, two options. One of them is shorter. So we choose the route through H, and we label this the root port. And E has only one port, so we label that the root port. Next, we're going to tag designated ports. So first, everything facing a root port is a designated port. And then we have to choose one with the lowest ID of the remaining connections. For A, for instance, we have a connection between A and H. We labeled this the root port, so the other end of that connection is going to be labeled the designated port, which means it has to be open for H to reach the root. And we do exactly the same thing for all the other connections. So wherever we have a root port, the other end of that connection is a designated port. Next we have some remaining paths where we have neither root port nor designated port. So we see CH, FH, and FG. So in this case we choose the one with the lowest ID and label it as a designated port. So CH will label C as a designated port. FH and FG, the end that attaches to F, is going to be labeled the designated port. And then all the remaining ports are going to be blocked. So this port H that faces F, port G that faces F, and port H that faces C are going to be blocked ports. So we have three blocked ports. 
That finishes our minimum spanning tree. This is what our final spanning tree looks like. We hide the connections that are blocked by these blocking ports, and we get a spanning tree that looks like this. So there are no cycles. Each switch has the shortest path to the root, and we've saved the redundant paths so that we can easily reopen them if one switch goes down so that we can reestablish a minimum spanning tree. That concludes my video on a spanning tree protocol. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please click like and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.